Hey everybody, uh, good morning. This is a viewer request. I put up a poll, said what kind of videos do people want to see more about, and somebody said Legends, and I thought that's a great idea. So Legends are the incredibly procedural and detailed uh, logging that the game does anytime you play. So like right here, we're looking at the Age of Myth for the Domain of Visions. And I think when I took this footage, I went through, I have three existing worlds. So, you know, when you set up a world, you, you generate that whole uh, planet, that whole map, basically, and then you choose a specific place to embark with your dwarves, and then you can retire that fortress when you want to and start another fortress. The way gameplay works is, you know, you have to focus on one fortress and then uh, move on, but it all gets logged in Legends, so you can go back and you can see um, all this stuff, uh, everything you're seeing now. And this is actually, so this is... Um, I think when I made this footage, my point was that I started off with the worst possible example, the least detailed and the least crazy stuff going on. And then by the end of this video, we'll be looking at my main world, which, uh, so if you guys remember the sand plane one I was using for videos a while back, it had a population of 220. It's the one from the happiness video. Um, that's the one we'll be looking at at the end. And that's like straight up like, like 40 years of gameplay. So that'll be good to look at. One thing I do want to talk about is legendary items uh, and even cursed items. So a few of my viewers left me comments in the last video because I was talking about a, a certain type of strange mood that involves murder. And uh, those are really cool. I'm going to talk about those and give credit uh, to those commenters because both of them told me stories from Dwarf Fortress that like blew my mind. I was like, this game is just so crazy. It always is amazing me with different procedural stuff. Um, so the way strange moods work... Uh, there's all these different triggers and things that can play into it that from the individual dwarf's personality and from what happens to them. But ultimately, it's a, it's pretty RNG. But if you have a big fortress, uh, semi-frequently, enough enough that like every time the trader comes in a big fortress, I'll have like maybe two more legendary items. Uh, and so dwarves will get these strange moods and they'll claim the craft shop that they need to make that item. And then they'll have a, a list usually of like two or three things that they specifically need. Sometimes it's like a very specific type of bone. Sometimes it's just any kind of wood. Um, the thing that people were commenting about last time was that they had dwarves who had fell moves, which is a very specific one that I described earlier where um, the dwarf goes uh, insane, like murderously insane. Fell, uh, I had to look it up to make sure I knew what it meant. And fell in the literary or traditional sense means evil or cruel, morally wrong and evil. So um, a fell mood, uh, which is one of the many types of strange moods you can get. You can get like fey moods, all kinds of different moods that involve different things and produce different things. But Well, okay, let me get into these viewer comments uh, just because it's a better example than I can give. So these are both fell moods. To clarify, strange moods can be any kind of thing, and they often produce useful things. Uh, you know, the average legendary item is like an incredible iron sword. Uh, oh, and sorry, before, this is going to be another disorganized one, but before I get too far on that, let me just specify so that the point of these legendary items is that they will be logged in your legends, appropriately enough, for the rest of all time. They can be stolen, they can be traded, they, uh, they will move all over the continent, and so it's really the coolest part. I mean, like, your fortresses are cool, the individual dwarves are, are really cool, but, like, um... These legendary items will actually circle the world for, you know, hundreds of years, um, and it'll be something one of your dwarves made, and that's really cool. So, okay, so, but let's talk about specifically these cursed items, these fell moods, uh, these fell mood examples. So, Incubus Daniel writes, regarding that bit about the butcher shop mood, that's called a fell mood, and your dwarves can enter it just like any other, as long as their happiness level is low enough to at least be in the orange zone. So, like, what he's talking about, you know, the faces at the top, so orange is, like, second from the right. Um, so, but his, so, he says that, this happened, and so a dwarf went crazy, killed another dwarf, butchered them, and created, quote, The dwarf in question made a shield made out of dwarf bone, covered in dwarf le leather, which menaced with spikes of dwarf bone. It bore on its front an image of the creator screaming in agony. That blew my mind. I, I wrote back, I said, that's the most metal thing I ever heard. And it was the most metal thing I ever heard until uh, a commenter with the handle Hans Lemerson quoted something that was even more metal. Uh, he, he just said... I once had a fell mood where the artifact created was a statue of a dwarf. So now, I want you to think about that. So, this dwarf went crazy, claimed a butcher shop, killed one of his fellow dwarves, and then used the body parts to make a statue of a dwarf. Pictured, it literally, just a serial killer. And the game procedurally generated this. This wasn't like an Easter egg specifically, you know, made by the devs. The game procedurally accidentally made, like, this crazy dark uh, serial killer story. 
uh, where he killed somebody and then it was a legendary recreation of that dwarf um, made with their own body. It's, it boggles the mind. And then uh, the, the craziest thing is that Hans, Hans Lemerson adds, it was many versions ago and happened during a tantrum spile I was trying to bring under control. I placed the newly created artifact statue in the dining hall to improve the morale of the remaining dwarves. And the insane thing is that might actually work because it is a legendary quality statue, which greatly would increase the, the value. <laughs> it might actually work. I, I'd have to see it for myself. But thank you both for commenting. That, both of those comments really made my day. And I know that other viewers you know, really appreciate stories like that. So if you're listening to this one and you have something like that, feel free to throw it in there. I'll, I'll shout you out if, if it amazes me. All right, going back to my legendary items. And I think we got just about three minutes left. All right, so now we are looking at the Domain of Visions. I'm not sure if that's what we started with, but I see there the Laborious Lancers, which are the ones that I recognize. That was the map that we've seen on the Sand Plain with 220 dwarves. Um, and this this map was, for me, like just a crazy legendary item generator. I mean, there was some, there was some special batch of seasonings in that, uh, in that temple. I'm sorry, temple, in that uh, fortress. Uh, but so... I'm looking for names that I recognize where I like, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that. that Cause a lot of times, so legendary items, uh, a lot of times a dwarf will just offer it to the government of your fortress. Um, but sometimes they'll claim it as a family heirloom or they'll claim it for themselves. And then it can still get stolen. It can still be traded, but, um, see, and so this is how I get most of mine out into the world. The dimpled labor, I think was, um, the name of the human traders that I traded with for like 40 years on this, on this map. And they would buy all my legendary items and kind of disseminate them out into the world that I guess is called, in this case, the Domain of Visions. And you can see it's all there. So I'm looking, I'm looking for ones that I specifically recognize. And, um, and uh, oh, in the thumbnail, actually, is a brand new iron sword from one of my new maps. Um, uh, that was cool. That was nice. It's not always a weapon. A lot of times it can be literally anything. It can be a cup. It can be a skirt. I've seen puzzle boxes. Ooh, I um, had... A few things that really reminded me of movies, actually. This is from my own experience that where I'll mention it. Um, there was there was like one ring. There was like a, at one point a really golden ring that was really legendary. I was like, ooh, that's cool. I hope that ends up in a volcano or something. Um, and then what else? There was something else that really reminded me of like the sixth sense. I'll have to go through my notes and find that again. It's not coming to me now. But I took a screenshot because I was like, this is this is the plot of the sixth sense. I think that's what it was. Um, but, oh, I guess I, I mentioned that because uh, Legendary Puzzle Box reminds me of Hellraiser. I swear they're not all evil. I just, I guess I have an eye for that, for the dark, creepy ones. But, um, like, one of the ones in, in this one is, like, a llama skirt that um, the creator actually kind of coveted for a long time and really didn't want to share with anybody. And then I think, like, I, I forced them to sell it because uh, they might have been tantruming out and we needed needed more to trade. So anyway, it's, it's out in there in the world. It's really beautiful. I like how the legendary stuff never gets destroyed. Or if it does, leave it in the comments, because I'm not aware of any ring in the volcano situations where a item will actually go away and no longer be lo uh, logged here in Legends. Um, but yeah, check out Legends. Okay, so if I didn't uh, already clarify, and I'm running out of time, but to get into Legends, you have to be in between fortresses. So you have to retire, and you can always unretire. Um, you know, just do it carefully and make sure you have backup saves. You can always retire at any time your main fortress to see your world's legends, and just check that out because it has everything. It has all the organizations. It has um, you see all these tabs up here: legends, civilizations, and entities. It'll keep track of every forgotten beast. It's pretty incredible stuff. Um, so please check that out for yourself. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm running out of time on this video. Thank you for watching. I always appreciate it. Uh, catch you soon. Bye.